Hello, welcome back. I'm Kat. No, Kat. Yes. If you haven't noticed, I haven't really been posting content this month because the scariest part of my October has been the fact that I have been having a streak of pretty bad luck with the books that I've been picking up. I also have school and, you know, there's quite a lot of it. So I thought to give you all some scrap of content, I would vlog a normal week in my life. I say normal, but that word literally means nothing anymore, so let's go with a week that is not particularly special in any way. I read these books and confusedly stare at a computer screen for hours on end, so I hope you enjoy it. So upon editing, I have realized that for each of the days, except for Wednesday, I provided almost no context as to what I was doing. I just started filming because I am good at this. I am good at this. Here's the deal. On Monday, I was writing a many page paper about the development of Mycenaean culture, art, and architecture in the Bronze Age. So you can watch me become increasingly unhinged. It's very fun. It's 8, 10 in the morning. Um, I've been working for like 15 minutes and I figured that I should do like a, you know, do work with me type of section for this video because look at me, this is what I'm doing. I'm all set up as you can see from the, the foreground of this video. That's an art word. I'm in my mindset. I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna... <laughs> Time check, it's 1026. You know, I've written a page, <laughs> which is not great. Things could be worse though. They could be better, but they could be worse. I'm having a really hard time writing this paper because I keep getting confused how things developed on the mainland. And so I'm gonna go through my textbook and I'm going to use this thing that I don't know if I'm allowed to use, but I'm using it anyway. And I'm gonna write like a timeline type of, I don't have any idea. I'm just trying. I think the essay will be fine to write. I'm just, I can't. Like, I'm trying so hard to figure out how to organize it and how to structure it, and I have no idea. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this and see if it helps, because I'm having a hard time. <laughs> so here we are in early Bronze Age, which started around 3000. In the year 3000, as our faves, the Joe Bros, said. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so...
to this. I finished, I think. I swear to God, if this does not get me through this essay, I don't know what will. We start in the early Bronze Age. We have architecture, we have pottery, we have graves. We have middle Bronze Age, pottery. Nope, architecture, pottery. And then you flip the page, because there's more. Late Bronze Age, stuff, general, grave shit. More grave shit. We were really hot on the graves in the late Bronze Age. Everyone was like, how are we going to handle these dead bodies? They did the most, which I think is really interesting. I mean, this is like, okay. And then you flip the page because there's more. And then you have architecture. You have more architecture. You have even more grave stuff because they switched it up and I didn't realize until I had already moved on. So we're back to the graves. And then you have pottery. And then you have sculpture. And this is my game plan, see? I've written my first two paragraphs, so that's like my first page. And then I'm gonna go through, not by period, but by like type of what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna do architecture, I'm gonna do pottery, I'm gonna do the grave situation. I'm gonna do, you know, like that. Cause I feel like for me, that'll be easier. Cause I can be like in the early bronze age, they, they did this. In the middle bronze age, they did this. In the late bronze age, they did that, 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 that. You get what I'm saying? And I think that's where I'm at. I think that's where I'm at. <laughs> Gotta keep yourself hype. It's really important. Ooh, that was loud. Oh my God. <laughs> Time check, it's 12, 18. So that's the update. Things are going great. Yeah. Can we talk about the fact that I've been writing this paper for eight hours? Should we talk about that fact? Probably not. I've been writing this paper for eight hours. It's 4.30. How's it going, Catherine? Well, thanks for asking. <laughs> my eyes are burning from staring at my computer screen for so long. But I'm on my last paragraph, and I've already hit my page count limit, so I would call this day a success. Anyway, I don't have anything else to say. Bye-bye. What up, Tuesday? I was doing a lot of assignments, a lot of assignments, and I filmed almost none of those assignments. This is what I did film. I was racing against the clock trying to get to my YA Lit Zoom on time while also attempting to write and turn in a passable discussion post on uh, the commentary that was in Bitch Planet Volume 2. Did I do it? Watch to find out. Words. My class is starting. What are the words? I'm gonna be late. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go with it. We're turning it in. I'm only two minutes late. It's fine. Create thread. I'm ready. Uh, what is it? Week eight? Ew. I've been doing this for eight weeks and it's been submitted. Now get to your Zoom class. This is a mess. This is a disaster. Okay. No, it's not. You're fine. Where's the Zoom link? Oh wait, I don't want to be like, I'm, oh, mm, okay. Well, it's happening. <laughs> I decided to rent a movie and that movie is Dog Tooth which I know at the moment nothing about. However, I have heard about it like in passing and people I think have recommended it to me a couple of times at least. So um, I'm excited. It looks fucked up. Ooh, rated 18 plus. That's me. Today, my main task is not school related, but um, I'm going to be helping my mom clean our house and I figured to be doubly productive, I would also listen to the audiobook uh, of Catherine House while I do so because I still have not read any of this this week. So let's fix that, right? So that's what's going to be up for at least most of today. It's going to be another riveting day of content that you can get nowhere else. Say hello to my main man, Jebediah. Ooh, those piercing eyes. Smize, sir. <laughs> Hello, time check. It's 2.38 and I'm having food product. But I wanted to tell you that plans have changed because, very exciting news, Noelle asked me to be a part of a video that she's putting together where she reads my favorite horror books, which first of all, 
with the fact that people want to read my recommendations like that's bananas to me um but anyway so i knew that she was doing this video for a few weeks now so she messaged me today this morning on instagram like asking if i wanted to be at the end of her vlog and we, we could do like a zoom or something like that and like you know chat about uh the things that she read i was like obviously yes I would love to so we're gonna do that later tonight and one of the things that was specifically on the list that I gave her that I know we're probably gonna have a lot to say about is The Troop by Nick Cutter which I haven't read since August of 2018 so I'm putting Catherine House on hold for just a little bit longer because I wanted to reread, re-listen to an audiobook of The Troop. So that's what I'm doing now. And I'm about an hour and a half in so far. I'm on chapter eight. So I forgot how quickly things start. I forgot how disgusting it is like from the get-go. And I also forgot, I don't know, it just, it has this old horror vibe, like this classic 80s horror vibe, despite not being that old. So far I'm really enjoying it. And I'm just gonna try and listen to it as much as I can before I talk to Noelle. That is the update. Okay. I don't know what it is about Nick Cutter's writing, but there is something about the words that he chooses or the way that he puts them together in sentences that just make me want to just lay down and die, but in like a good way. I've never come across an author who makes me want to unzip my skin suit and slither right on out more than Nick Cutter. And I don't exactly know why, but it just, there's something about the way that he writes his scenes. I just read the one where Scoutmaster Tim and Max perform that surgery on the, the guy. And um, ah, that's a fun element of this. It happened with The Deep. It's happening the second time with this book. Like it's really, it's really fucking me up. What a time to be alive. I am thriving, kind of. Not, I, I don't have any idea. Oh, mm, that's my update. I don't have any idea. Okay, back in. Whew. Time check. It is 7.13, which means that I finished the book, The Troop, with about 45 minutes to spare. It's been a long time since I've had to speed read like that, and honestly, ooh. <laughs> I did have to up my audiobook to three times speed, but you know, I've already read the book, so I feel okay about that. Usually I don't do that. That's a little aggressive even for me. Thoughts on The Troop? round two. Oh wow, she gross. I forgot the yeah and then also the whoa and then just some of that little like Ooh. every time I read this book or think about this book I just hi <sighs> yeah. <laughs> It's a lot. It's a lot for sure because you've got the body horror layer with the parasites, which is for sure Z's gross, but then you also have the horror of the breakdown of the psychological stability of multiple boys on the island after Scoutmaster Tim bites the dust. I don't feel like that's a spoiler. It's it's pretty apparent from the start he is not gonna make it. And if that's not enough for you, then there's also the bigger evil scientist creating these parasites for like a military weapon mass destruction type thing. That's, that's spooky. Basically what I'm saying is Nick Cutter created a multi-layered horror experience. Just like the first time, I genuinely don't know whether I like should praise this book and say that I enjoyed it, or if I should be honest, I hated every second of it, and yet I'm gonna maintain that five star rating, cause ooh. Anyway, I feel like I'm not saying anything, so I'm gonna leave you with, I have, what, 40 minutes until this thing with Noelle, which I'm nervous for, but we're gonna do it, it's gonna be great. And then I don't know what I'm gonna do after, but uh, I have finished a book. Look at me, finishing a book and a reading vlog, what the fuck? She's a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm trying to put my hair up. It's only 8.30. That was really fun. I'm so glad that I did that. <laughs> I'm so glad. I was like nervous, but excited. And now I blacked it out and I don't remember anything I said, but I am feeling fine. I need to relax. I need some fucking water, hang on. <laughs> the timeline of this video is not linear. I did a poor job of filming, I'm not gonna lie. There's a reason why I don't film vlogs very often because I just don't do well with long form content that I have to keep up with for 
days at a time. It is a struggle for me. This video is an atrocity, and yet it is the only kind of content you're getting! I'm so sorry! Okay, so anyway, Friday, what happened? What happened? I decided that I had made enough progress with my schoolwork to kind of take a day. So I decided to make some progress with my reading for the week, seeing as this is a reading vlog. Here, you can see me finishing The Catcher in the Rye for the first time in my life. There is backstory to this. Basically, I'm really close with one of my aunts, and so I was hanging out at her house earlier this month and on our way back to my house, I asked her what her favorite like book that she read in school was. She was an English minor, I'm like half an English major, so we have about the same level of collegiate English in our bodies. And so we got on this conversation about how the education system kind of fucks up teaching kids books. I said something along the lines of like, in high school I hated being forced to read things and these days I kind of want to go back and reread a lot of the stuff that I read in high school because I feel like now I'll have a completely different outlook on it when I'm not sitting there the entire time dragging my feet through it going, oh my god, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this because I had to read it, you know what I mean? I was like, I want to read classics, but also like I don't necessarily love having classroom discussions because I feel like you're getting graded, you're getting judged, you know? So I was like, I want to read like classic literature that everyone should read and then just like shoot the shit with someone who I know isn't gonna like make fun of me for saying something ridiculous or making a dumb joke about a beloved character in literature, you know what I'm saying? And so we decided to make this mega list of books that we either have read or have not read and we're gonna read them together and just kind of fucking go at it. I'm excited about that because I didn't read a lot of the books in high school that a lot of other people did and in college now a lot of the classes that I'm taking are reading more modern contemporary literature, which like I have no issue with, but I also feel like I've missed a lot of stuff that most people in the world or in the US like education system have read. We decided to start with Catcher in the Rye because it's short and it's something that you tend to read when you're younger so it's not like super complex old English whatever the fuck. Um, and so a quick review. <laughs> Personally I gave it two stars although I am glad that I read it because number one I now understand why it is so freaking polarizing and number two I can speak my truth about it because you know books are subjective y'all. In the end I understand the intention of the story and I respect what it brought to the table, re like the preservation of innocence and exploring uh, human hypocrisy and things like that. Holden is an interesting character study. However, comma, the reading experience itself was unenjoyable to a fault and I hope to never repeat it in my life. As you can see from my face here when I immediately ran to the library to return the book after I had finished reading it, I was ready to remove it from my vicinity. It's something where like it's interesting to discuss or to think about and you know consider when it was written and why it was written and why it was written the way it was written. That's a lot of words, but it's not something that I'm like gonna tout as a favorite for sure. Definitely not because the misogyny, the classism, Holden's general vibe, and also the repetition in the writing style. That's a big no-no for me. If we harken back to my past when I used to um, dissect a specific smutty fairy series, you'll know that when an author leans on a pattern in their writing, whether it be in sentence structure or just like the physical words that they choose to use, I cannot help but notice it and once I see it I can't unsee it and it just grinds my gears. Moving on, when I came out of the library, I obviously had new books to read because obviously. Next, I hung outside my house with Sarah and she was kind enough to allow me to film her and prove to you all that I have human interaction outside of the internet, so that was very fun. And finally, on Friday, I made some progress on the Catherine house, which I then updated you on. I just got to the end of year one, which is like 40% through. I'm conflicted because half of me is like, the atmosphere is great. I'm really loving the gothic vibes. I'm loving this boarding school, college-esque setting. But I feel like there is a lack of drive. I'm kind of sitting here going, is there a mystery unfolding? Or did Elizabeth Thomas just forget to add a plot in? And so I'm not really sure like where we're headed. I don't dislike it. I just also though, I'm kind of sitting here and I'm like, what am I supposed to be? taking away from this. Does that make any sense? Oh, hey, welcome to the abrupt ending for this video because that is all that I filmed. I, I don't know either. I will see you in the future. I'm not gonna make any concrete plans because clearly I'm not gonna be able to keep up with them. 
And well, this is the end. I hope you have a splendid day and I will see you again, maybe. Okay. I don't have an outro. Bye.